here. I'm so excited for another day. It's been a rough week, but God is good. He brought us through it. He brought us through it. I was talking to Diane last night. We were praying over some things, and she said, sometimes you got to focus on what's going right instead of everything that seems to be going wrong. Amen. That's just it. <laughs> so I praise God, and I, I thank him for another day. I thank him for everyone who's here in the building. We're really blessed to have everyone here this morning. I thank him for the word he has to go through, uh, to go forward today. And clearly, it's um, somebody must need it because trust me, we've all been through some distractions. So we're just gonna call it like it is. We're gonna tell the devil he does not have place here. If he has been using you, tell him to get out now. <laughs> Invite the Holy Spirit back in because he can't do stuff without using us, right? Amen. Okay, we're not even in the sermon yet. Praise Jesus. Amen. 
So now that we've cleared the air and are ready for praise and service, we want to wish a happy birthday, happy anniversary to everybody celebrating in October. We're coming around the mountain, coming to the end of the month, and today is Bishop and Pastor Brad Shaw's anniversary. Yay. Yes, anniversary from Faith Zone out in Winston-Salem. Happy anniversary to you. And we have a very special birthday happening on the 27th of this month. Our very own DJ Shahi. Very happy free birthday. We have a card up here. He was letting us know last week. He was like, me, me, me. I know we got you. So happy free birthday to you. I, I tell it all, huh? That's what Robin said to you. It's okay. You're family. <laughs> uh, Gabriel Rollins, her birthday is the day after on the 28th. And we honor our very own musician who unfortunately has not been able to make it out for a while, but we love him. On October 30th is Sal Woodbury's birthday. Yeah, Sal Woodbury's birthday. So happy birthday and happy anniversary to, to you all. Um, for those who are returning to school, I understand that the elementary school children are pretty much back in full swing. Um, I know that some of the preschool children have been back as well. So we continue to pray for your safety and for your success, that the blood of Jesus would cover you, that no weapon formed against you would prosper. You will remember that you're the head and not the tail above, not beneath. You are a lender. You are not a borrower. Okay? That's how this year is going to go. So we're excited for you. We also want to lift up Plentiful Harvest. We announced last week that Diane Cheryl has started this program for tutoring for free. So your children have no excuse to not have a successful year. She said it's, I think, grades 1 through 12, if not K through 12, grades 1 through 12. So everybody should be on her students. She doesn't play. Let me just let you know right now, Amen. she's stern. So don't think it's going to be Patty Kate because that's not her uh, personality. But we want to lift up plenty for harvest and praying over the harvest for that um, new business. Uh, voter registration, if you have not registered to vote, it's too late to do it by mail, but it is not too late to do it in person if you participate in early voting. Please, 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 it is crucial. Please vote. You see the scripture, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, and then he will make our paths straight. So say a prayer before you go in there and, and press some uh, buttons or whatever your uh, style is, to, that the Lord would lead you on who to vote for and what he wants um, to happen in this election period. Early voting continues through next Saturday. It stops October 31st, and then we know Election Day is on November 3rd. My personal request is if we can be fasting and praying on that day because we need some, some answers um, in our government. Some things only do come by fasting. Um, this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We continue to pray that you would feel the presence of the Lord and the strength of the Lord as some have gone through um, breast cancer. I'm excited to say I got to hear about a lot of testimonials about survivors for breast cancer. So we are excited to have heard. I know um, last weekend Woman of Grace had someone who gave a testimonial. Twice they had breast cancer. And so we thank God that he is still in the healing business, and we trust him for the cure. We also lift up uh, Infant Loss Month for those who may have lost an infant. I gave my testimony last week that I had uh, miscarried when I was married, so I know that pain, but I also know that you can be healed from that pain of loss. Um, and someone else was saying this is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, which I didn't realize, so forgive me for not announcing that, and our prayers are for the victims, um, that they would be recovered, but for those who are offenders, that they would be delivered. I think a lot of times we pray for those, when we should pray for those who have been vic victims of domestic abuse, but there's something that may be, uh, need to be changed in those who are actually abusing others. So that is our prayer. Um, finally, this is Clergy Appreciation Month. So to all of my <laughs> co-laborers um, in the field, we are praying that God would continue to lead us and guide us and strengthen us, especially through this pandemic and changing times. Okay, let's see. Um, Zeta Phi Beta is having a mental health seminar today. It is virtual. Please, please, please try to attend. It's at noon. They have a link. I think we have it on our Facebook page as well. Um, is that right, Tia? Did I put it on our page? I'll check it. Okay, I think it's on our page as well. 
Um, please, please, please attend that if you can. And then on tomorrow, I will be preaching at St. Paul AME by Zoom. So that will be fun. <laughs> and Lenore, in honor of my esteemed SAR, Pastor Moss, for Clergy Appreciation Month mixed with Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So there is a word, and we'll put the link for the Zoom on our um, Facebook page as well. I think that's it for all of the announcements. Are there any other announcements? Oh, please feel free to check in. Check in at the fellowship. One, two, power three. For those in the building, please put your phones on mute or vibrate. And please check my phone, Bobby, because you know I got a gazillion, thank you. I have a gazillion alarms that like to go off and, and try to make uh, Nisha crazy. All right, it's time for praise and worship. Y'all ready? Okay. All right. Why are you laughing? Because Naomi's getting up like we <laughs> You want to come up and sing with her? She, she's ready. If no one else is ready. Come on. Come on. I need you to help me clap. Come on. Okay. That's fine. You Next can time.
Yes. Um, Mark yes. Thank y'all for working so hard. <laughs> Thanks for being here.
Responsive reading today is coming from Matthew 22, 36 through 40. Starting at verse 36, Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearers of his word. Amen. Tell me what, I just praise God. Let's just take a moment to praise the Lord. He's just so awesome. I just love how he just turns things around and he makes us focus on him instead of so many other things. I thank him for the many gifts that he's given us. I thank him that I can call folks up who didn't even know that we we're going to have stuff to do today. I thank him that he uses us in ways that we never would have thought we could be used. I thank him that he stops the enemy's plan and he puts us all on one cord. There's so much to be thankful for. I thank him for unity, and I thank him for peace, and I thank him for love, and I thank him for grace, and I thank him for mercy. I thank him that I have neighbors to love. Some people don't have neighbors to love, but I also thank him that I have neighbors who love me back. I thank him that not only are we called to love him, but he makes sure that he always loves us. Yes. Even when we don't love him with our all, do you know he still loves us with his all? Yes. Hallelujah. Let's just take a moment to thank the Lord for being so awesome and being so good in spite of us. Yes. Amen. Yes. And making sure that we have everything that we need when we need it. Yes. Amen. We were rapping and talking about he's always on time, right? And I like to say that he's actually always early. Yes. That before we even got to this day, to this moment, to this time, he knew we would be here and he was already planning to work it out. Yes. So sometimes you got to take a moment. Forgive me, this is off, off protocol. It's not yes. on, the, on the program. But sometimes you got to take a moment just to stop and thank the Lord. I believe that the kids are
And then you turn me around And you bless me twice As I look back Over This old life I see you've been blessing me Blessing me, blessing me Oh
This message also was used for our very first leadership workshop here at the Fellowship One to the Power of Three. I think we were actually still around the corner, right? That was in January. We had these teams. We had the, the men, uh, Derek and Bobby. We had the buns, uh, Tiga and Nisha, and we had the educators, Robin and Diane, <laughs> right? But we all talked about love and what it means to love. Well, today we're going to tie love into promotion. It's hard to even think about those two words in relationship with one another. Love and promotion. As we talk about remaining and maintaining and moving forward. Last week we talked about proceeding, okay? We talked about the and from Matthew 6, 33, right? We talked about seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and that proceeding then these things will be added, right? That's what we talked about. And not only did we talk about the and last week in Matthew 6, 33, but we talked about how to proceed. How do we proceed without fainting? Remember we read that word in Galatians 6, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So we said without fainting, with continual praise, that's how we also proceed in trusting in God. It's amazing how God keeps giving me that theme over and over again. Just trust me. Just trust me. Even if it don't look right. Even if it looks like this ain't going to work. Even if you want to quit. You want to sit down. You want to sleep through it. Just trust me. Amen. That's how we proceed. Before that, on the second Saturday, we started talking about blessing the Lord with all of our soul and all that is within us, right? We went from Psalm 103. And that was the praise. That was the first step in the remaining and maintaining in order for us to move forward from Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within us. Bless his holy name. We also said we were going to bless the Lord, and just like today, we weren't going to forget his benefits. Amen. And we listed them. When we ran up, we started running out of space on the slide, and that was just a couple of benefits. So we've gone from blessing the Lord with our all and not forgetting his benefits to the end, and not only uh, not growing faint, but functioning as the body of Christ. See, God has sent a word that is not just for the fellowship, one to the power of three. Yeah. Thank you, Holy Spirit, he's in my ear. This is not a game. This is not a game, it's a family. Yeah. It's not a gang, it's a family. Wherever we are going to church, wherever we're worshiping, wherever we're being fed, it's not a gang, it's a family. Thank you, Lord. It's not competition, it's cooperation. I think somehow we've gotten it wrong. We want to be the first church to have everything in place, and we don't want to share with anybody else. We want to be the biggest, we want to be the baddest, and we want to be the most popular. That is not what this is about. And the Holy Spirit told us last week the moving forward was not only for the fellowship, one to the power of three, it was for the body of Christ. We got to get that. It's for the entire body of Christ. So when we were talking about functioning as the body, we started talking about how to treat each other and making sure that we are being accountable for our own actions. I remember um, growing up, whenever I would get in trouble, I would want to blame something or someone else, right? We still do it as adults. We yeah. do it with God, right? We'll get in trouble for something and say, well, if they had done this, I wouldn't have done that. And the Holy Spirit says, but I told you what to do. I told you how to handle it. So maybe that person was weak and you were going to be their strength by handling it the correct way, right? Amen. Don't blame the circumstance. Lord, I was tired. But you know how to pray. <laughs> Lord, I was cranky, but you know how to pray. Lord, I was in a bad mood. For me, I tell you, the, the excuse for this week was it was a horrible week. It was crazy. I was working. You know, it's just like babies. When babies are tired or hungry, how do you know? They cry. I don't think that ever stops in life. When we get tired or we get hungry, you know, you've seen the Snickers commercials, so you're not yourself, right? Yeah, yeah. It's the same. Did y'all know that? We, we still act like babies. I'm tired, I'm hungry, I'm going off, I'm going in, okay? But the difference is, once we come to know Christ, 
we can actually turn that over to him and admit, Lord, I'm tired. Lord, I'm hungry. And he fixes it, and he helps us to do right by one another. So that's what we talked about last week, functioning as the body of Christ and how we treat each other and how we're accountable. Treating each other and acting the way God expects us to act. Because yeah. ultimately, that is who we have to answer to. And I think sometimes we forget that. I'm going to use myself as an example. Robin, I'm, I must be maturing spiritually because I usually use her. <laughs> but I'm going to use myself as an example this time. Whenever I may not be totally right in my reaction, I know who my hype crew is. The hype crew is the ones that you call. They're they going to be on your side whether you're right or wrong. Mm -hmm. There's some that I call because I want that support. And then when I want the reality or I want the truth or I want to make sure I'm pleasing God, there's a whole different group of people who will say, you did this right, but you should have considered that. Yesterday, talking to Diane, she said, well, were you gentle? Because we've been talking about gentleness, right? It, it hurt to hear it. I felt like I was, though, so I was glad that I had grown. But a lot of times we call our hype crew. We don't call God, and we don't call the godly. Yeah. We call the ones that say what we want to hear. Yeah, what you mean they did that? Let's go fight. Now, I'm, I'm from that fighting family, okay? And even though I might not be a big fist fighter, y'all know this mouth. It'll knock anybody out. You know, the eyebrow goes up, my whole stance changes. I'm, uh uh, no, you ain't gonna talk to my sister, blah, 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 blah. Okay, where is the Holy Spirit, body of Christ? <laughs> where is the Holy Spirit, family of Christ? We're all family. Did y'all know that? We're all family. We're all family. And so it's interesting that God has us stuck there. And we've said this before that every time the Lord gives a word, we get tested. Every single time. Yes. Every single time. And I told Diane, I said, you know, it feels like all week the devil kept trying to make me weary. The scripture last week was, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we uh, faint not, right? right? There was a nurse that was having a bad day. I saw a doctor go off, and I said, oh, she's going to have a bad day. Well, later today, she took it out on me. Now, the old Jenny, and this is why I thank God, and I can tell you he's able. Y'all know the old Jenny would have been like, look, I don't know. Hey, I ain't him. We ain't going to talk, but I said, Lord, help me. She's having a bad day. Help me to handle this the way you want me to handle it. I actually paused and prayed. I called her later, one-on-one. -on -one. I said, listen, I know you're having a bad day, but your tone was a little off. we got to communicate better. I can see where the stress is hitting from COVID in the hospital. The way we're talking to each other. There was another doctor I talked to a couple weeks ago who was going off. I said, okay, I'm not sure who's in the room with you. I don't know who you're talking to, but this is how we're going to communicate. <laughs> We're going to respect each other. That stress, you feel it. It's yeah. almost, it's a, it's a spirit. Am mm -hmm. I right? Jennifer's shaking her head. You walk in and you feel that heaviness. Yes. You look at the news, you're like, the numbers are going up. The hospitals are in you, All the news, you feel the heaviness. But we're still the body. We're still the family. We're still supposed to be coming together, not going against each other. Mm -hmm. So that is the question. That is the question. In promotion, the three questions, how do we treat God, how do we treat others, and how do we treat ourselves? We just read about it in Matthew 22, 36 to 40. It just emphasized it. So as I was going through my plan, y'all know I always have a plan, and I had called Bob. I think Tiga came by, Diane came by. I was like, I'm ready. Monday, y'all, because I'm going back to work Tuesday. My sermon is ready, right? I came here. I worked on the sermon. And God said, that's not what I have for you to say. I'm like, but God, I got to work. I got to work this week. Like, he didn't know. <laughs> I got this and did. Like, he didn't know. He's like, right, I'm going to give you what you need for everybody, not just for you, Jenny. See, he keeps giving me these personal sermons that correct me, and then he gives me a whole other sermon for everybody else. Poor Bobby, when did you get the slides? Thursday, Friday? Friday morning, probably, because I think I sent them late Thursday. Like, I'm sorry. This is what came. You know, and y'all saw the crazy cat that tries to get in the way on top of everything else. <laughs> I'm trying to, to God be the glory. She's going to start getting locked up. But really, <laughs> those are the questions. So here we are in Matthew 22. And, and I want you to open your Bibles to Matthew 22, because what God has done differently with this sermon is he actually has us going through the whole chapter. I love how he does it. 
So Matthew 22, 34, here we are. The Pharisees had heard that Jesus had just silenced the Sadducees with his reply to their question. There was a setup, okay? So they thought the Pharisees, those are the ones who strictly follow the law, heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the ones that didn't believe in resurrection. It's important to know who's who in the setting of this story, okay? So the Pharisees, they're experts in the law. The Sadducees don't believe in resurrection, and both of them are trying to set up Christ, amen? Mm -hmm. So here we are, and, and the ones that didn't um, believe in the resurrection, um, Jesus gave them a reply just before verse 34 that shocked them. But if we go back even further, and that's why I say you're going to skim. I may not read that exact scripture, but at least uh, skim. If we go back to verses 23 to 33, remember what verse 34 says. Jesus silenced the Sadducees. That's why we have to study while we read in order to grasp the whole story, right? Mm -hmm. The entirety of what was going on, the Sadducees who did not believe in the resurrection. So verses 23 to 33. Before we get to verse 34, we're on the Sadducees, the religious leaders. Verse 23 says it like this. That same day, Jesus was approached by some Sadducees, religious leaders, who say there is no resurrection from the dead, and then they pose the question, right? That's what it says right there. So this was the jump off. This is the beginning of what they think is going to be the setup for Jesus. It cracks me up. I don't know how they thought they were going to set up Jesus. But okay, that's, that's what some people still do. Oh, sorry. So <laughs> here we see where Jesus is constantly being challenged. He's constantly being challenged. And before these challenges, at the beginning of the whole chapter, if you go up to verse 1, Jesus is teaching about a wedding feast, Right? Sometimes the Bible highlights this section is about this. So if we go all the way back to verse 1, he's talking about how the kingdom of heaven will be illustrated by a king that appeared or that prepared a wedding feast for his son. He's, he's talking about a parable here. His servants were sent to all those he invited, right? But they didn't come. More servants were sent to those invited to say dinner's ready. It's kind of like if I can use Nish and Bobby, um, when they sent their invitation out for their wedding, if no one that they sent those invitations to came to the wedding, right? And then they started saying, well, this is on the menu. They had a, a wonderful menu, come on. Um, they were actually cooking Amen. for the African-American side, the Italian side, the Irish side. We had all kinds of food there, right? So if they said, okay, they didn't respond, they didn't RSVP, so let me let them know what's on the menu. Because that's going to get them. Because you know, some of us are trifling. You want to <laughs> see what they're going to have. I mean, it's true. What they're going to serve. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna, well, I'm going to have to stop by and get something to eat if all they're going to have is sandwiches. You know how we do. Come on. Yes. Okay, we do it. They have a pimento cheese. Uh-uh, I got to stop by Popeye's or something. <laughs> Welcome to Hickory, <laughs> the pimento cheese capital. Okay. <laughs> you know how they do. This is nothing new. Here it is. So he's telling them about the food, and he's like, they're going to have this food and that food. And they acted like they were too busy. One had to go farm. Now, you got notice in advance, but that particular day, you got to go farm. <laughs> Priorities and consideration. Okay, oh, I, I got a farm that day. I can't come. One had to do this and one had to do that. And all these people were making these excuses. Remember, he's talking about the kingdom of heaven, but he's using the parable of a wedding feast, right? So they were invited. So then in verse 6, the messengers go out. Well, then people start acting crazy. They start seizing and killing the messengers. So they have gone from refusing to go to ignoring the invitation to murdering the messengers the messengers, right? The king destroyed the last group, the ones that were killing the messengers. He destroyed them in this parable, burned their city in this parable. I'm telling you, Jesus be laying it out, okay? And he burned it, that's not in the scripture. He burned the city down, and then he started uh, looking at, okay, this was a wedding feast, and then he invited whoever would come. So if you read further down, it says there were good people invited and bad people. Mm. So here we are looking at someone who we classify as bad, but we don't invite him to the feast. But in this parable, the king invited both. Amen. He wanted both of them, both sets, to enjoy. The ones who were so-called good, the ones who were believers, were too busy to do what he asked them to do. So yeah. he said, well, I'm going to invite everybody else. 
good and bad. So here they are. And, and it, it's kind of like when we used to go on the streets and pass flyers out if we had an event coming up. We didn't necessarily know those people. Remember we come out of church to be a flyer under your windshield wiper? This was kind of like that, just trying to make you understand what it was like. They didn't have windshield wipers. Don't go to scripture <laughs> trying to find a windshield wiper, OK? <laughs> I'm just show. We're painting the picture. Because some people, I didn't know windshield wiper was in the scripture. It's not that I know of, OK? But that's how it would be today. And then they invited so many people. The wedding hall was now full. Now, it's interesting. The folks who knew him didn't come. They had two chances. Some other people started abusing them and didn't come. Yeah. But they went to the strangers, and the strangers came, and the wedding hall was full. There were good people, though, and there were bad people, just like our receptions. Mm -hmm. You've been out of work. You know, we all got that cousin. OK? We all got the one, <laughs> or two or three. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Oh, we might have been the one. <laughs> OK, we think it's that. Look, what is some, somebody's point of like, that was me. I was the one. <laughs> God is able, right? Yeah. We all have that one, or we're the one. And all of them are here. But then verse 11 says that there was someone that wasn't dressed right. Whether they were good or whether they were bad, this one wasn't dressed right. Now, you remember, thank you, Holy Spirit, uh, a couple months ago, we talked about how to dress for the Lord. It was somewhere around New Year's. And we were talking about making sure you put on compassion and you put on all those different... You remember that sermon. Well, here we have someone who was not dressed right for the wedding. The king asked him about it, but the man couldn't reply. So the man was bound, thrown into the outer darkness, darkness where there would be weeping and gnashing of teeth because he wasn't dressed right. And the end of that section, we hear this all the time, for many are called, but the chosen are few. That's 22.14, Matthew 22.14. Many are called. There was something about him where he didn't get chosen. So the chosen are few. We have to do our part to be the chosen too. Amen. Sometimes God will call us. Thank you. I don't know. The Holy Spirit is in my ear today. He'll call us, and he'll try to choose us, and we don't answer. Oh, my. A lot of us do that. He'll call us, and we'll say, I can't. I'm not equipped. I got news for you. When the Lord calls you to do something, he's already equipped you. Amen. Stop limiting him. A lot of times when we limit ourselves, we're limiting what we think he can do. If he calls you to do, and you know who I'm talking to, whatever he calls you to do, do it. It's good to be humble, but it's also better to know he's doing it anyway. <laughs> it ain't about us. Get up there and do what he is calling you to do. Amen. And so we knew about what had happened um, with that person who got kicked out. We don't want to be the one to get kicked out. So we started talking about a wedding banquet. Folks were invited. Some refused. Some rejected. Some rebelled against the invitation. This is just like the invitation to Christ, right? Sometimes we say, come on, give your life to Christ. Oh, I'm too busy right now. I'm not ready. I'm not good enough. Not knowing he's the one that makes the change. Or else they'll say, oh, I don't know how I feel about all that religious stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm just telling you lines I've heard when I've tried to introduce people to Christ. And then the next thing you know, they're not dressed right. And unfortunately, they don't get to stay at the wedding banquet. Yeah. That is what is happening here. For, for those who attacked the messengers, though, there's also a lesson in this because the king's army handled them. Okay? The son, he didn't go out. The king, just like we have our angels, they took care of that. <laughs> so messengers, we're going to be attacked. But the king's army always, always takes care of it. Yes. And so that's what's important there. But uh, one thing also about reading about promotion and moving forward is once we're in that promoted position the Lord has called us to, remember we got to dress right. And a lot of the dressing right isn't depending on what shoes or skirt or whatever pants you got on. It's about your attitude. Amen. <laughs> what you wearing? <laughs> what are we wearing? Are we dressing right for the wedding banquet? Or are we just wearing any old thing like we don't care and we don't honor the king or whoever he has sent, his messengers? So here we read this account. It's recorded first. And let's move a little bit further because after that parable, we see some other things happening. So the next part is not a parable. The next part is reality. The Pharisees meet together to figure out how to track Jesus into saying something he could be arrested for. 
Hmm? In other words, they wanted to set them up. So we're talking about promotion and moving forward. Sometimes, thank you, Holy Spirit, people try to set you up. Yeah. But you know who gets you out of it is Jesus. Amen. All right? Don't lean on your own understanding. They were trying to, to set him up. So what the Pharisees did is they sent some of their disciples. Now, it's important to know what a disciple is because a lot of times we think a disciple is always a follower of Christ. No, a disciple is a student that follows a leader. So different leaders have disciples. And if you read it, read it directly. Check me, Matthew 22. I think we're somewhere near the 15th verse. It says that they sent their disciples, okay, the Pharisees, sent their disciples, not Jesus' disciples, along with some of the supporters of Herod. Because they were upset and scared that Jesus was going to be the next king. Okay, they had Herod in their pocket. He kind of lived ruthlessly. Okay, and... Mm, the spiritual leaders didn't want to give up their power yes. to anyone or the power they thought they had. That's like today. Okay, Jesus. So now we know what a disciple is. It says, teacher, they said. They were trying to butter him up, right, show some respect. Listen to the next thing the disciples, Pharisees' disciples said. We know how honest you are. Look at them. They started to try to compliment Jesus and get him to put his guard down. They said in verse 16, you teach the way of God truthfully. You are impartial and you don't play favorites. Trying to butter him up, right? Trying to catch him off guard. Verse 15 lets us know, though, before they met with him, remember they were trying to set him up. They were plotting against Jesus. So here comes these disciples um, of the Pharisees trying to woo Jesus. It, it was not... Um, an authentic or a sincere praise. That's right. It wasn't like the praise we just had here. It was for a different reason. They wanted to catch him off guard and give him fake compliments. Okay? They had an ulterior motive. So here's where we see the setup. But here's where we also learn that you cannot catch Jesus off guard. You can't. <laughs> right. I don't care how much praise, fake praise people want to do, you can't. He already knows our hearts, he knows our minds, he knows our intentions. So verse 17 is where they try to sneak him. They start asking about taxes, pretending it's an innocent question. First they give compliments in his ear, right? And also they give compliments where people can hear him, okay? It wasn't like they were in a private space. And they try to get him to say something that does not line up with the law's tradition. They think they're going to get him right here, but Jesus knew. How do we know that he knew? Read a little further. He says, why are you trying to trap me? <laughs> right. Jesus called him out. He didn't play along. He wasn't like, oh, that. He said, why are you trying to trap me? They asked him about the taxes. Remember, the law. They asked him, well, who should pay the taxes and who shouldn't? And, and this is what I love, a, a couple things, a, a plenty of things I love about Jesus, but he will set you straight. He said, whose face is on the coin? Yes. Right. <laughs> Whoever's face is on the coin, that's who you honor. Give Caesar what is Caesar's. Give God what is God's. Amen? Yeah. So they were amazed. They were amazed. The poor Pharisees, here they are, sending their little disciples to try to trick Jesus, and Jesus done converted them. <laughs> <laughs> They were amazed. That's what it says. They were amazed at him. The disciples were amazed, and they went away. They didn't keep trying. They didn't keep saying, okay, well, I'm going to ask them another question, okay? And that's what's so funny, that he still is changing our hearts and minds as we move forward. Still in Matthew 22, and I didn't realize this. Verse 23 is still the same day. Did y'all know that? <laughs> He just finished dealing with the Pharisees' disciples, right? It's still the same day. He just finished talking about taxes. Well, here come the Sadducees, the ones that don't believe in the resurrection, right? That's right. So we went from the wedding, who's called, who's chosen. Then we went to the Pharisees' disciples, trying to trick them about the taxes. And now here we are with the Sadducees. And again, people are in earshot. Okay, so they hear what's going on. So the intention isn't only to make Jesus mess up, but also to pull people away from following him 
and supporting him, right? right? So Matthew 5, 17, though, tells us as they're trying to get Jesus to go against the law, Matthew 5, 17 says he didn't come to abolish the law. He came to fulfill it. Amen. The reason he came to fulfill it is so that we don't have to pay for what we can't afford to pay for, Amen. our sins. Yes. Okay? Ain't no stoning no more. Read the Old Testament. Folks yes. were getting stoned, not just a little bit, like a bell to the behind, stoned to death mm -hmm. for stuff they were doing. But Jesus' blood, with our confession, that's what covers the sin. So here we are, Matthew 22 and 34. We were starting with teacher, and then they start going back to Moses. Again, intentionally trying to make sure people get here. Well, we're going to get him to speak against Moses, and we're going to let him know that we know. Because, you know, Moses, that's heritage. That's Jewish heritage. You don't say nothing like, like uh and living color used to say, don't nobody better not say nothing about Miss Jenkins. Well, for the Jews, it was like, don't nobody say nothing about Moses. Right. Okay? You don't talk about Moses wrong. Okay? So they said Moses. They started referring to the law, and they started talking about what if a woman marries a man and the man dies? Mosaic law says that her brother was, his brother was supposed to marry her. That was the law. Okay? The woman is alive, husband one dies, she marries the brother of husband one, that's husband two. They gave this, this long drawn out story. Well, what if husband two dies? Then she marries brother three, and now she's got husband three, okay? Husband three dies, she marries brother four, and now she has husband four. And they went on till husband seven. And this was the question that the Sadducees, who do not believe in resurrection, asked. They said, who is yes. her husband yes. at the yes. resurrection? Because yes. they were trying to disprove. Thank you, Tiga. Yes. They were trying to disprove that the, re the resurrection was real. But here comes Jesus. I yes. love Jesus. He, sets it, he shuts it down every time. Here comes Jesus. This is, <laughs> this is how he replied. He says, your mistake is that you don't know the scriptures. Yes. Oh, my. Yes. <laughs> Talk about putting somebody in their place. He says, your mistake is you don't know the scriptures. Yes. And then he goes on to say, you don't know the power of God. Verse yes. 30, okay, Matthew 22. It says, for when the dead rise, they will neither marry nor be given in marriage. In this respect, they'll be like the angels in heaven. Yes. He said, but now as to whether there will be a resurrection of the dead, haven't you ever read about this in scripture? Yes. Okay. He said them straight. He said, you don't, <laughs> you don't know the word. You, don't know, the word. Yeah, that's right. you know, you know, this is another reason. Thank you, Lord. We need to know the word if we're going to be trying to, you know, have these conversations and help in the, in the process of conversion. You got to love Jesus. You got to love Jesus. But notice here that um, the devil's whole plan was to try to convince everyone that Jesus was against the law because that was big, yeah. right? And then people wouldn't follow him because it's like, oh, that's sacrilegious. Yeah, He's right. going against the law. But, but if you keep on reading, <laughs> Jesus, not only does he know scripture, he knows Jewish ancestry, okay? Yeah. He says, haven't you ever read about this in the scriptures? Then he takes it back to before Moses. This is Jesus. I'm telling you, he is awesome. He says, long after Abraham, yes. <laughs> Isaac, and Jacob had died. <laughs> he said, God said, I am the God of Abraham, yes. the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. So he is the God of the living and not the dead. Jesus. He's the God of the living, but what I love about it is he's like, oh, y'all got Moses? Okay, check this out. I got Isaac, <laughs> Abraham, and Jacob. But since y'all want to go to Jewish ancestry, yeah. we're going to go back a little bit further, too, before <laughs> Moses. And then verse 33 says, when the crowds heard him, they were astounded in his teaching. That lets us know, again, it was in public. They were trying to publicly pull down Jesus. That's what it's saying. So in order for God to remain our God, we have to be alive. Is your life showing that you're alive or you're acting dead? Whoa. Are we believing that we have this hope for eternal life 
Are we acting like this is it down here? This is the end. God is the God of the living. Amen? That's what Amen. we just read. Amen. Eternal life is through him. So now we get to the meat. We done had our appetizer, had our salad. Mm -hmm. Tasted good. I'm glad you ate your vegetables. Mm -hmm. Now it's time for the meat. Yeah. Now we get to the commandments. And here's what it says in Matthew 22, 34. We read it. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees with his reply, remember we started with the Pharisees' disciples trying to trick Jesus. Next, the Sadducees tried to trick Jesus. Now the Pharisees heard about Jesus silencing the Sadducees. They were still determined to trick him. They hadn't gotten it yet, okay? They didn't realize that it was done. He's Jesus, okay? You can't trick him. And so it says here in uh, verse 22, 34, the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees with his reply. They met together to question him again. Verse 35, Matthew 22 and 35 says, one of them an expert in religious law. So now we got the attorneys. We had the Pharisees' disciples, right? We had the Sadducees. Now we got the attorney, the one who is specializing in religious law. You know, down here, we have civil law, we have family law, we have criminal law, all types of law. Well, Attorney Dula, if you are tuning in, these were specializing in religious law. So the word continues in verse 35. The expert tried to trap him with this question. This is exactly what it says. Verse 36 says, teacher, again, probably trying to distract Jesus with a compliment. It says, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Here we go again. Yeah. With this law, what's the most important commandment? Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Now, what you got to understand, remember we talked about Jewish law. This is the Shema. This is what Jew Jewish people repeat. They pray that prayer uh, three times a day, all right? This is... So here's the lawyer asking about law, and this is what they repeat. This is what they have on the doorposts, okay? They say it over and over and over again. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. We're talking about promotion and, and what it looks like for us to be promoted in the Lord when we remain and maintain in this position. So to main, remain and maintain, we have to love the Lord our God with all of our heart. Let's take a moment and check our hearts. Is it all God's or is something competing? Mm. With all of our soul, let's take a moment and check our soul. Is it all God's or is something competing? Mm. With all of our mind, let's take a moment and check our mind. Is it all God's or is something competing? This is what he says. That's the first and greatest commandment. So in other words, we got to love God with our all. That's first. Okay? Y'all see that connection. And I love it again that, that Jesus keeps taking it back. He's like, okay, since y'all want to talk about the law, <laughs> here we have it. This is the law. Verse 38. This is the first and greatest commandment. And then he says the second, a second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. Are we loving our neighbor? Are we loving ourself? Amen? We can stop right there because this is where we need to work on promotion. This is where we need the work, the remaining in and, re and maintaining as we move forward. This is where the whole body of Christ, not just the fellowship, one to the power of three, the whole body of Christ needs work. Yeah. How are we treating God? How are we treating our neighbor? And how are we treating ourselves? Well, we know, we talked about, we're supposed to keep God first, right? Seek him first in his kingdom of righteousness. Everything else will be added. We know that. We know we're supposed to trust in the Lord with all our hearts and not lean on our own understanding. We know that, okay? We know our paths will be directed at that point. We know that. But when it comes to how we treat each other, what God was showing me is that the way we treat each other is another way that we honor God. I don't think we catch that. We treat each other any old kind of way, and then we act like we're doing a service for God, uh -huh. and we pray a lot. Yes. But how we treat each other actually honors God. That's it's right. supposed to honor God. Yes. Amen? So how are we treating 
each other. It's kind of like when you go somewhere on behalf of your family, on behalf of your job, you represent them, right? That's right. So how we treat each other should be representing God. That's what it's supposed to do. But do we do it? So the question is, how are we showing God we love him? 1 John 4.20 says, if you say you love God but hate your brother, you're a liar. That's right. That's the word. I didn't say the name called. I ain't called somebody. Don't say she called. The word says, let me say it again, if you say you love God but hate your brother, you're a liar. Look it up. That's not me, you know, sometimes I'll say this is how it's, no. It specifically says that. This is not name calling. So how are we showing God that we love him? If we say that we praise God, how are we showing that? James 1, 22 to 25 tells us to be doers of the word and not hearers only. The end of that section says this one will be blessed in what he does. Not in what he hears. That's right. And what he does. <laughs> Amen? That's what it says. Uh, my dad used to say it this way. Um, say what you mean and mean what you say. That's, right. That's how Robert Wright used to say yeah. it. <laughs> okay? Say what you mean, mean what you say. Don't front, in other words. Don't say you're going to do something and not do it. That's right. And this relates back to our, our lives and our relationship with Christ. Amen. If we're telling God that we love him, then we need to be that. Amen. We need to be that love and be consistent and be constant. Something the Lord was showing me is sometimes we act different in different locations. We act real holy here, but might curse somebody out on the road or stick our middle finger up at the grocery store or go off like we don't know somebody at work. Okay? I have news for you. God is everywhere. Amen. You can't act one way here and act another way everywhere else. Sometimes we do a different way. We do really great at home. But once we leave home, we totally forget that we're representing Christ. Yeah. He is everywhere. Just picture him right there beside you. Go ahead and picture it because that's where he is. Amen. <laughs> and then if you're living right, you should be picturing him inside of you. That's about as close as it gets. That's where the Holy Spirit is supposed to be. How are we treating each other? How are we showing God that we love him? It's interesting because Philippians 2, 3 to 4, I used to always use this scripture, and this you can attest, especially with young people with children. It talks about consideration. I'm like, yeah, kids, they need to understand. If Diane's tuned in, she'll tell you. I say, oh, make sure they know this scripture. Philippians 2, 3 to 4, make sure we know it. But what I'm realizing is we need to teach it to the young people, but we need to remember it as adults and apply it. Yes. It says it here. It says, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look out only for your own interests, Amen. but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Yes. That's what it says. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, this is for me too, so don't, don't get extra sensitive and be like, I ain't listening to her no more. This is what God is telling me that we need to do as a body of Christ, not just the fellowship, one to the power of three. This part of uh, Philippians, it starts talking about how Christ was glorifying God by humbling himself. Yes. So answer me this. How come Jesus can humble himself as the king of kings and the Lord of lords, but we won't humble ourselves by keeping our mouths shut yes. when we need to? Why is that? Mm. He's king of kings and he's Lord of lords. He humbled himself. He kept his mouth shut to the point that he saved us on the cross. Yeah. But, but whenever someone's having a conversation with us, we can't do that. we got to say something. Okay? Why is that? Why do we have problems with that humility? That's pride. And what God has shown me is that is what caused the devil to fall. He was an angel, in case y'all didn't know. If you think you're too good and I'm, I'm set, I ain't never going to fall. Lucifer was an angel. Thank you. One of the lead angels. Yes. Not a little teeny tiny cherubim. Right. Okay? And he fell because of pride. Pride is the opposite of humility. Here it is. The Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, in order to glorify God, humbles himself. But we won't. We won't. And the promotion that the Holy Spirit is showing us is in humility. It's being humbled. Okay? Be okay with receiving correction. 
Stop always clapping back. You know, what the Lord showed me this week, and it was hard to do, I'm going to be honest. That scripture that we always talk about, being slow to speak, quick to listen, slow to anger. Yes. This whole week, I've had to actually, this, most everybody here will probably tell you, this is the least they've ever heard from me. I said, I'm actually going to be quiet. I'm going to pray. And then I'm going to send something if I'm supposed to. And I'm going to pray that it's received from the Lord and not from Jenny. Because I think that's a lot, a lot of times we're clapping back, thinking we're clapping back at who God has sent like they did with these messengers, but we're not. We're clapping back at God. So try to make sure that we respect each other in order to, go, to honor God. That's the promotion. Matthew 5.5 5 says it. The meek will inherit the earth. Matthew 23.12 says, for those who exalt themselves, they'll be humble. Yes. Being humble is hard. Already living in humility is much simpler. But somebody having to knock you down a couple steps, I've been there. Okay? Those who humble themselves will be exalted. I'm going to give you another example from me. Not from Robin today. I'm going to give her a day off. You know, I've got a lot of examples, Robin. But I'll give you a day off. I remember <laughs> my brother and I, my brother has the highest IQ out of all the kids. And we were debating about the origin of a word. I'm not, okay, so we're super nerds, clearly, even though he's way cooler than I am. But we were debating about the origin of the word, and I think I had just finished college, and he challenged me by saying, well, did you get this score, whatever score, which I know his blew mine out the water, and I said something smart back, and I felt like a hammer fell when it came out of my mouth. And medical school became the hardest thing I think I've ever done. Before that moment, I'm telling you, he will humble the proud. I was being prideful. Before that moment, school was easy. It was like drinking water. I used to skip school. I can tell it now because I'm grown, I think. I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble, but I'm going to tell it anyway. When I was at Howard that first year, the only time I went to class was when I had a test. I partied. I partied all the time. And it was like, oh, I got a test. I got to go to class. Okay? Do you know God was so merciful? I would blow the test out the water. It was natural. The, the understanding was natural. But when that pride came, it was like something shifted. He's like, oh, you let that go to your head. You forgot. That's from me. That ain't from you. That's from me. And I had to struggle through medical school. I'm telling you, it's truth that he does elevate those who are already humble, but he will humble the proud. That's the scripture. We're promoted into the graces and into the presence of Christ to remain and maintain in while we're moving forward. But for some reason, we just don't like that humility. We don't like it. Another way to show God that we are loving him, Romans 12, 16 says, be of the same mind. This is the King James Version. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. Yes. Okay? The New Living Translation says it this way. Live in harmony with each other. Live in harmony with each other. Then it says, don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. And I love this last verse. This part is for me, this last part. Don't think you know it all. <laughs> There's only one that knows it all. That's God. Amen. Don't think you know it all. It's okay to ask somebody, how do I do this? What is this? Why, how can you do this? Wow, you're good at that. And they know here, any, anybody who knows me, don't let me know what gift you have. Because the next thing I'm saying, okay, I need you to do these ten things. I need you to do that. Derek, I need you to do this. Okay? Can you actually type this up? Nish, can you file that? Poor Bobby. He has it. <laughs> Every email I send him now is a list of numbers now. I know I'm driving crazy. God is able. Hang in there, brother. Hang in there. Okay? Because <laughs> I know I don't know it all. But everybody in here goes back to being that body of Christ. Everybody has a different part to play. Amen. God bless Ken. I know he's on his job. I'm texting. Hey, there's a hole. I don't know how to fix it. When you are. <laughs> you know? I'm not the DIY, DIY doing your That ain't me. You know, I will call and, hey, I know there's a video. That ain't realistic. I'm going to jack it up. <laughs> I'm not good with a hammer. Y'all know I can't even roll a table without hurting my leg. Okay? <laughs> you got to be real. We don't know it all. That is the word. The chapter here continues to explain how we're supposed to treat each other. The promoted position is summed up like this. 
Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. Amen. That's scripture. That's not a saying. That's the scripture. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. That's how we end up in the promoted position that God has for us. So we have three foundational lessons here in Matthew 22, 36 to 40. The first one was about praise. The second was talking about proceeding. And now here we are in this promoted position. But it still boils down to the final verse there, verse 40. It says the entire law, all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. Yes. Loving the Lord with our all, loving each other as we love ourselves. Everything else falls under that. Everything else he asks us to do falls under that. So that's what we have to understand, that the spiritual promoted position is a position of humility. <laughs> we don't think of humility and promotion along the same lines, right? We think you're either humble or you're promoted. Mm -mm. Yeah. In Christ's kingdom, the least is the greatest, right? Amen. So it's a, it's a position of humility. The spiritual promoted position is a position of praise. Another thing we don't think about. We think about if I'm promoted, I'm getting the praise. Mm -mm, not in the kingdom. God gets all the praise, right? Yeah, Bless right. the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. No matter how much King David had, he still made sure to give the praise back to God. This spiritual promoted position is a position, you ain't going to like it, of servitude. If Jesus can wash some dirty feet, y'all forget. Where they lived, they didn't have shoes. Their feet weren't covered like this. They were on dusty roads with sandals on. But he didn't say, okay, you clean it first, and I'm going to come and, and dry them or wipe them off. He got down with the bowl and the towel and started washing their feet. Yes. But we act like we can't even greet each other when we come in the house of the Lord. What is this? Why can't we be humble the way he wants us to be humble and act the way he wants us to act when he's the only one that has the right to do whatever he wants to do, but he keeps on taking care of us? What is this? We have this promotion idea backwards. It's tight, but it's right. So that is how we are promoted by the greatest being the servant. As we continue to move forward, here's my prayer, our prayer, that we don't forget to neglect or, or neglect praising the Lord. We have to always praise the Lord. In the praising, what God is saying to us is also in how we treat each other. Okay? It's like, and I, and I know it's spiritual. We'll be doing well. We'll be moving along smoothly. And then something crazy will happen. And here's my challenge. My personal challenge is remembering it is spiritual. That's the hard thing. You know, not that that person's the devil, but hey, the devil's using them. And they may not know. That's right. Right? Amen. So my responsibility is to pray for us and with us. Your responsibility is to pray for me and with me. Yeah. Okay? And let the Lord lead us. That's my prayer. The prayer is that we would remain and maintain in this cycle of praising, proceeding, promoting. But promoting each other. You know, you're doing a good job. Not, mm, he ain't playing my note right. <laughs> yeah. You're awesome. You know, we appreciate you. We love you. And I'm not embarrassed to say it. And it ain't romantic. Don't be trying to mess stuff up and pervert stuff. That's it's true. pure love. Okay? Because sometimes we want to swing. You see how she says she loves I love you with the love of Christ. Agape, Agape love. Yeah. Amen. Okay? Philos. That's stuff God's been trying to feed us that we keep cutting up on. That's my prayer. That when God promotes us also, that we remain humble in him. He's the one taking us high. Don't be like me and jack stuff up and make stuff hard for, or like I used to be. Okay? And let stuff go to your head and now you've made it harder on yourself. Don't do that. Remain humble. That is the position of promotion. So if we were, if we're prideful today, and we didn't know any better. Because the word talks about that if you know to do good and you don't do it, it's sin. Right? Mm -hmm. For those who are not saved, you may not have known any better, but now you know. Amen. The other thing we have to tell you is there's only one way to the Father. That's through the Son. Diane and I were talking about how she was witnessing to someone that used to go to um, church with their grandmother. Grandma can't get you in. <laughs> Even if she's up there, this is not like the club. 
Remember earlier we were saying it ain't a gang, it's also not a club. It ain't, oh, I know, yeah, yeah, let him in. That's oh, y'all right. ain't been to the club. I'm sorry, wait a minute. Okay, it ain't like knowing somebody at the restaurant. <laughs> yeah, let him in, that's on me. Give him my, the manager's discount. You have to know him for yourself. And I got news for you, this is not to scare anyone who may be tuned in, who doesn't know the Lord. Time is winding up. That's right. People are dying left and right, and it's not all COVID. Some people are being found, it was their last night. It's not all COVID. Amen. Time is winding up, and I just, I feel this, this, this passion to make sure that everyone makes it in, that I can be that usher, that we all make it in together. So if you don't know the Lord, our prayer, our request is that you say this prayer with us. It's a prayer for salvation from Romans 10 and 9. It's simple. It says, Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus is Lord. I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you for my salvation in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you said that prayer, you're saved. Welcome to the family. Amen. We're ready to move forward. Remain in and maintain praise, proceed, promote, and move forward. Now, some of us did become prideful, and we stayed in that moment of pride, <laughs> okay? And to God be the glory, you've heard this message, and you know it's time to come back. We can't make it on our own, Amen. you know? Sometimes we act like, I don't need nobody. Where are you getting bread? They don't sell bread at the grocery store. Did y'all know that? <laughs> okay. I'm just saying, you can't go to the gas station yes. to fill up your heart with blood. I'm just saying. Ain't but one way to make it, and that's because of Jesus. But we mess up. Some of us have fallen short, and some of us have gotten prideful, and we forgot about what it says, about pride coming before destruction. Our prayer is that you come on back today and give your life to Christ. And it's a simple prayer. It's 1 John 1 and 9. It says, Dear God, we confess our many sins to you. Thank you for your forgiveness of our sins. Thank you for cleansing us from all of our wickedness. In Jesus' name, amen. If that was you, we welcome you back to this promoted position of humility. We are excited about what God is going to do to you, through you, and for you. As he elevates the humble, that's what he said he would do. We're going to have a song by Music Fellowship, and then our closing prayer will be led by Nisha. Mommy to you. I heard that. Nisha, <laughs> <laughs>
pray, so please bow your head and close your eyes. Naomi, I meet you too. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for everything you have done for us today. We cannot thank you enough, God. We come right now asking for forgiveness for anything that we may have said or done that was wrong, God. We thank you that you constantly forgive us every single time. We are not the first time offenders, but just like you are merciful with us every single time, God, please remind us to be merciful towards one another every single time, God, because you said that um, if we faint not, God, so we ask you that you would just remind us of that as we come against anything or face any challenges, but most importantly, you remind us of the biggest picture, which is that we are family, and we are one unit, and one body in Christ Jesus, God. We thank you that every time the devil may use us or a spirit may come against us, God, you shut it down. We thank you that your Holy Spirit still shows up in spite of God. We thank you that you use us to minister to others outside of the fellowship, God. We thank you for everyone that is watching. We thank you for everyone that can't be here or can't watch right now, that when they watch later, God, that your Holy Spirit would show up with them wherever they are, God, and bless them. We ask that when we leave this place, we wouldn't just go throughout our week forgetting everything that we learned today, God, and we would remember it at all times, that you have made us new and we are moving forward. Yes. All of these things we ask in Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 beautiful prayer. Um, in case y'all saw us laughing a little bit, um, Naomi was in the back dancing. <laughs> and what's funny about that is that's what Nisha does during practice. <laughs> it was the same move. <laughs> yeah. She's learning. She's a little legacy. Praise God. Um, tonight at 5 p.m. we have our Bible study. We'll be coming from Matthew 22 as well as Galatians 6 since we didn't have Bible study last week. Fellowship fun on October 31st will be Love Trivia. Love Trivia. Mm -hmm. And so, just know that on fifth Saturdays, we don't have a, a normal service. We do something fun. And it's still online. It's still live. We did the songs before. I think, Jenny, you were on there before. And I don't know if you were on. I know T was on for the songs. And I got some great ideas from Dad and from um, Deacon Walt at Mount Zion for the next one. But... Love trivia is what is on my heart and mind this time. And November 1st is daylight savings time. So don't forget, what is it? Fall back? Fall back. Okay, fall back. Bobby's <laughs> a champ at that if anyone needs to know. Huh? Bobby is the master of falling forward and falling yeah, back. So yeah. just, if you have questions, ask him. He's reminded me like 12 times. See, see, see how we need each other? Yeah. Thanks for joining in. Um, thank you, Joseph, for praying today and all your hard work. We love you. Love you. Thank you. Um, if God leads you to give in any way, whether it's time or talent or financially, uh, please reach out to us. You'll see a website on the screen as well as our Cash Out, PayPal, PO Box, and our phone number. Know that we're praying for you. Uh, we're praying that God will bless you the way that you are blessing not just the fellowship, one to the power of three, but his entire body. Um, also, we're praying that you don't hold back. If God has given you a talent, please use it. Don't be like the one that hid his and had it taken away. Be like the ones that used theirs and had even more talents added. If God has given you time and saying you need to go help the body with this, please do it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Time is his anyway. If he's telling you to give financially, please do it. His word says that when you give, he gives back to you, press down, shake together, run it over. Okay? That's it. But it also says if you give a little, you get a little. You give much, you give much. Keep doing that whole word. And again, it's for the entire body of Christ. Okay. We love you, and we look forward to seeing you either this evening or next Saturday for Fellowship Fun. <laughs>